the huge ancient four-masted ships, the aircraft's carriers of antiquity, and uh, they were able to carry, from what we were told, 6,000 men, about as many as a modern aircraft carrier has, is able to carry. The successors and their descendants built fleets consisting of numerous poly ears reaching the construction of colossal vessels such as the Icosiris and the Tesseracondiris, meaning uh, four-masted. As we'll see, these were real floating fortresses that resembled modern battleships and aircraft carriers. In particular, the four-masted ship carries a, a, a total crew of 6,000 men, about as many as a modern aircraft carrier can carry. As it has almost been accepted in the scientific community, the number of horizontal rows in an ancient polythene could not be greater than three, as was established by the experimental attempts of the Italian maritime cities of the Renaissance, Venice, Genoa, Pisa, and other cities. The same is evident from Roman reliefs, which never depict ships with more than three horizontal rows of oars, as also found in the Renaissance in Italy, the maximum number of Hermits who could handle an oar was eight. Based on what was reported, the largest ship that could be built was a 24, that is, a three-masted boat with a maximum number of erits on each oar, which was eight. The above-mentioned distribution of rows of oars and erits seems to have been quite functional up to the 16th, mentioned by the ancient sources. Perseus, the last king of Macedonia, had as 16 as his flagships. Nevertheless, the ancient sources mention a Tesseracondiris, this is the picture that we see here, that of Ptolemy Philopatrus added that he had 4,000 erits. The attempt to interpret this term, which corresponds to 40 rowers in a vertical group of oars, causes confusion to scholars to this day. Various explanations have been proposed for the distribution of the rowers of this clearly enormous ship, but the most likely remains that proposed by L. Carson, who hypothesized that this was a catamaran type of ship. In his view, the Tesseracondiris actually consisted of two twenties, which were firmly attached to a common deck. Such cases are known as the Hellenistic period, the, for example, during the siege of Syracuse by the Romans in 2012 BC, the latter connected fives in the same way in order to place on the common deck the necessary pelopoles, those are tower-shaped siege structures, for the capture of the city's coastal walls. According to uh, Cason, who, has, uh, who, who uh, gives the rendering of this type of a ship here that we're seeing, each of the two Aikosides, the um, that made up the Tesserocondiris, would have 2,000 erits, 1,000 on each side of it. These would be arranged in three horizontal rows of paddles, with 50 paddles each, meaning there would be 50 vertical groups of paddles. And continuing, he considers that the erits of each vertical group would be 20, arranged as follows, eight Threantis upper row, seven Zigitis middle row, five Thalamites lower row. Cason's version of the Tesserocondiris as a catamaran vessel may seem paradoxical, but it is the most logical one compared to other hypotheses. For example, a 19th century philologist, philologist considered that the Tesserocondiri here, as we see, had 40 horizontal rows of oars with a single erit on each oar. The Tessera Condiris was a costly vessel, unwieldy and extremely difficult to navigate, a true shipbuilding failure. It seems, however, that its builders were aware of these disadvantages before starting its construction. Ptolemy Philopator, the richest monarch of his time, would have had no financial problems in terms of its maintenance. If the sailors, deck service, etc., needed to navigate it, the officers, the military guard, and the rest of the staff are counted, the total crew reaching with about 4,000 sailors, 6,000 men, about as many as a modern aircraft carrier. The four-masted only advantages were her size and her deck. Such a vessel, even huge even for modern times, 
was suitable for demonstrating the power of the Ptolemaic state to enemies and friends. Additionally, if used in combat operations, its deck could carry colossal-sized catapults and even helicopters as well as large numbers of marines. Gradually, such colossal warships were abandoned by the Hellenistic naval forces due to their high maintenance costs and difficulty, of course, of navigation. The only real handy ones were the 4, 5, 6, and less, and so the 7, 8, and 10. Uh, this is by Pericles de Lianis. I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.